call the session to order. Um, I'll be very brief. Thank you for coming tonight to uh, share the views and uh, discuss whatever we're going to be discussing. And I'll turn it over to Larry because he's going to basically be the director for tonight and show you, explain to you the procedure and what we're going to do. Thank you. Is this a great master? Or great <laughs> uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Larry Smith. I'm a planner with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. That's the regional planning agency for Hampton and Hampshire counties. And we've had a long-term relationship with the planning board, staffing them over more than 10 years now, uh, providing ser planning services to the planning board on a uh, regular basis. And one of the things they decided they wanted to do last year was to update the town's master plan. The master plan is well over 10 years old. Um, it was a very nice, well done master plan, uh, but master plans need to be updated as time goes by because things change. And so they, uh, with the Board of Selectmen, uh, decided to hire us to come in and undertake the effort to update the master plan. We're not going to be rewriting the master plan, we're going to be updating it. That means we're going to be uh, looking at the statistics and updating the statistics and then really concentrating on the goals and objectives and recommendations, uh, ultimately leading to where hopefully would you like Hadley to be in the next 10 to 20 years. And the master plan would be your guide uh, for the town uh, to achieve that. We have undertaken a, a number of efforts uh, already in this. Uh, we did, did do a community survey uh, that 350 people in town took. And many of you will find a copy of that on your chair. And I'm just going to run, briefly run through that now. It was a short survey of, of 10 questions. Uh, the first question was, how important are the following aspects of living in Hadley to you? The top ranked answers, in fact, they all ranked very high. Uh, but the top ones were the rural areas and the agricultural heritage the quality of public safety services, police, fire, and EMS, the quality of the public schools, the quality of homes and neighborhoods, the property tax rate compared to other towns, the open town meeting form of government, the historic sites and buildings, the library, the senior center, the town common, uh, all of them ranked very, very highly. And in fact, none of the choices uh, received more than 18% of being not important. The second question was how important are the following general development goals for Hadley's future? The, those rated the most important were to preserve the air and water quality, to protect the natural, environment, the natural environment, being the forest, fish, and wildlife, to support local farms and agricultural businesses, to preserve open space, to manage and control commercial development, and to preserve more agricultural lands, to improve internet access and speeds, promote traditional New England style architecture. The ones that were rated the least important were to encourage more commercial development, commercial economic development, and to encourage residential development of agricultural lands. Question number three was what types of residential growth would you prefer for Hadley in the future? Those rating as being the most, most preferred were single family homes on larger yards, with larger yards, three quarter plus acres. Essentially what the predominant development pattern in Hadley has long been. Uh, also rated highly were homes for people with disabilities, uh, more senior housing, and uh, single family homes in compact neighborhoods. The two uses that were deemed by majority not to be preferred were apartments and condominiums and duplexes and three family homes. Question number four was hypothetically, could you afford or rent to buy or rent the home in which you currently live at its current market value? 59% of the respondents said yes, they could. 22% said they couldn't. And 19% weren't sure. Question number five was what kind of commercial growth would you prefer for Hadley in the future? Uh, the, those uses that uh, had the predominantly uh, a strong preference were more small locally owned stores, more farms and agricultural businesses, more home-based businesses, more restaurants and grocery stores, more offices. 
and those that were uh, rated or highly rated as not being preferred were more large national chain stores, more hotels and tourist oriented services, and more industrial businesses like for, for trucking and manu like trucking and manufacturing. Question number six was what issues need our attention? Those, top, those being the top needing uh, uses were sewer treatment cap and operation, safety of pedestrians and bicyclists, traffic safety cut throughs and speeding, the quality of the police, fire and EMS, protection of wetlands and streams, more energy efficient town buildings and vehicles, easier to live and commute without a car, reducing trash and solid waste, producing more electricity with solar, wind and hydro, helping homeowners use less energy. Those that were the lowest rated, but still had a, a great majority of those that uh, uh, felt that it needed attention, uh, were the quality of the public schools and the maintenance and repair of town buildings. And again, even though those were the last two, people weren't saying that's not important. They were saying it's still very important, but not as important as everything else. Question number seven was what solutions would you support? The top rated ones of people uh, strongly supporting or supporting were find new ways in addition to APR to preserve open land, to extend and connect sidewalks, especially in the commercial areas, to encourage more senior housing to be built, to help homeowners, homeowners weatherize efficient heating and cooling, to improve the look of the town center, to focus economic development on small businesses, to improve the quality of town roads, better PVTA service, to renovate the Russell School for use as town offices, and those rating the two lowest, and these were the only two where a majority did not support it. They were to encourage more retail stores on Route 9 and to attract more industrial businesses. Question number eight was, what is the most important thing that you think Hadley should do to improve the quality of life in our town? And these were the uh, top, top answers. Uh, stop with the big box cluster which causes traffic pollution is unsightly. Preserve farms and open space, wetlands mostly destroyed with one area left for sale on Route 9. Maintain our agricultural character, i.e. constrain conversion of agricultural land to new housing as much as possible, limit the pace of new housing, and encourage young farmers starting out. <clears throat> Encouraging, promoting, and preserving agricultural heritage and find ways to make housing and affordable, housing to make housing affordable so that those of us who grew up in Hadley can stay in Hadley. <coughs> encourage more outdoor activity by promoting use of existing town common and recreation areas. Increase fire and ambulance service, build new public safety complex, have a true department to oversee building maintenance. And lastly, a town hall space for these gatherings, social activities, a place to meet people, athletic events, and cultural events. In terms of who took the survey, 30% were from age 55 to 64, 22% were 44 to 54, 18% were 65 to 74. So a clear majority of the people were the older uh, segment of the, of the town's population. And the last question was, what best describes what you do? And that did allow for multiple responses. 189 were employed full-time, 106 were retired, 45 were employed part-time, 36 were a parent or homemaker, 33 did volunteer work, Eight were full-time students and five were part-time students. So those were the results of the survey. Uh, I don't think there were really any surprises there. Uh, many of them just confirmed a lot relative to the survey results that were completed with the uh, prior master plan. Uh, so the uh, general tenor of the feelings of the community in terms of where they want to go have remained fairly constant. So let me talk a little bit about tonight and what we're going to be doing. Uh, this public forum is designed to be a collaborative process in which we're all going to work together to try to identify problems and to try to come up with solutions to them. 
after this brief introduction, we're going to be going into the side room and breaking down into subgroups around the tables where we'll be discussing uh, these topics and each table will have a planning board member as a facilitator. Uh, their job is essentially to listen to what's being said and kind of direct the conversation to make sure it stays consistent and, and goes in the direction and, and concentrates in the areas that we're trying to focus on. Um, the desired outcomes of these sessions are you're going to be asked to think of yourselves as community designers and you're going to be discussing the existing town conditions and identifying land use and development opportunities and constraints. Then we will articulate a vision for the future of the town and then we'll brainstorm specific ideas about types of land use and development that there could be in the future and where this development would be best located. At the end of the forum, We'll be coming back to this room here, where each table will, will be reporting out. When you do go to your tables, we're going to ask that one person volunteer to be a scribe, essentially just to take notes and keep track of what uh, the, uh, uh, the conversation is and what particular ideas you come up with. Uh, we do have the pencils and we have forms and papers for you to fill out on that. There will be a couple of exercises that we're going to have where we're going to have maps that we're going to lay down, where you'll be taking those ideas and actually take markers and apply them to the map for us. Uh, and that's going to be great and I will just ask a couple of things as we go through this process and one would be um, to try to be specific and take generalized statements and kind of hone in you know such as I'm sure we're going to hear uh, we want to retain the rural character in Hadley. Uh, rural character means a lot of different things to a lot of different people uh, so if you kind of get into well exactly what is it that makes this rural character that you like so much um, and things like that, just to try to uh, uh, focus in on, on areas like that. Um, so lastly, uh, we'll be coming back out. The different groups will be coming up and making their reports and their presentations. We'll then have a discussion about what were the commonalities and consistencies that the various groups came up with, what were some of the really good ideas, and then just try to reach an informal consensus in terms of oh, what were those that we think are the highest priorities uh, and are the most important and we ought to be working towards achieving. We have a lot of to do. We have a heavy agenda. Are we going to get to it all? Probably not, but we're going to get to as much as we can. Uh, there are going to be various groups that probably want to focus in on certain things that other groups might not. Maybe they want to look into other ones. We will be following up and working with the planning board at subsequent meetings to kind of fine tune this and hit areas that we might not have hit uh, at, the, at this session. Um, in terms of the outcomes of the forum, in the end of the day, uh, they should conclude a list of land use resources, needs, opportunities, constraints, a map of existing land use conditions, resources and opportunities, and constraints for future development and community capacity building, words and phrases that describe a visual and the ideal of the ideal future for Hadley, a general map of preferred activities and land uses, well, both commercial, residential, mixed use, and recreational, that could be supported by a broad coalition of, count, of town constituents, a list of development drivers and brainstorming as a possible big idea that could help catalyze and organize the town's future land use efforts. Maps, brainstorming detailed alternative development scenarios that could uh, develop into more detailed area plans. These more detailed possibilities for future development would describe desirable residential densities in different locations, size, character, and design for new developments and potential locations. And then finally, a list of implementation strategies and next steps for where do we go, uh, who should be involved in that, and then how do we get there. All of these are, are identified in, on your agenda. So you will have this as a framework when you sit down at your tables to start working with this. Uh, again, we have your planning board members at the tables as facilitators. Uh, Dylan and I, and Dylan Sussman, Dylan, stand up. Dylan's also a planner at the Regional Planning Agency and he's helping work on this project uh, and was available tonight to come here and help out. I appreciate that. Um, so I'm going to say we probably have around 30 people here tonight. And so we have five tables and I've always thought that six was like the perfect number so this is going to be great. So what I would like to do, I'm going to start with you 
So we're going to go down the rows and you're going to count off by fives. Hey, before we get to the reports, I know most of you had a chance before the beginning of the meeting to mull around and just take a look at a number of the, the maps and plans we put together. Um, this was the environmental constraints map that we put together for Hadley uh, that showed those areas that have uh, environmental constraints towards development. It doesn't necessarily prohibit it, uh, but there are certain steps you have to go through in order to do something there. You'll see there are large areas of it that are covered by the floodplain. You'll also see that there are large areas covered by natural endangered species habitat. Um, the other location uh, or identifying color that we have is the dark brown, which are steep slopes, of which again you have down here southerly where the range is, and you have a small area up here. But by and large, you can see it's relatively developable. Um, you do have floodplains. Uh, there are ways of doing good, certain types of development in the floodplain. Uh, you do have in natural heritage species areas. There are ways you can do some types of development in those areas. But Hadley is a very, very flat place with very, very fertile soils. Uh, again, uh, you worked on the land use map that we had uh, for Hadley. Uh, as you can tell, Hadley is very, very green. Uh, and that's very, very good. Um, you have mostly green, which is farm, forest, pasture lands, you have your colored areas where you have your development, and then you have your purple area where you have your more intense commercial development. And this plan identifies where the protected lands are. Much of these are your APR properties, especially up in this area here and down in here. Um, as I mentioned in a couple of the tables I was at, Hadley really has the only successful agricultural preservation restriction program in the state, or, or rather the transfer of development right program in the state. Uh, where the planning board is able to use uh, various techniques through the zoning for, so that when they get commercial development along Route 9, uh, if they want higher densities or lesser parking, they can pay into an account as a formula, which the town can then use towards their share, towards the state matching funds to buy the agricultural preservation restrictions on the farmland. And it's a hugely successful program in Hadley. And then here's the zoning map. And as Bill Dwyer pointed out, this is much like the original zoning map uh, that, that uh, Hadley adopted many years ago. You do have the commercial strip along Route 9 that was by design and intent. You have uh, more recently had some limited business, uh, low density business uh, districts created along Route 47. But again, predominantly the rest of the town is zoned residential. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go table by table. Uh, have whoever you pick from your group come up. We're going to put your two maps up here and you're going to explain what it is you've come up with. So is there a table that wants to go first? Very good. Who's got your plans? We are table number two. We try hard. All right. Um, so key resources. Um, the first one I think was the Town consensus on commitment to preserving farmland and open space. There's not too many things in town that almost everybody agrees with, but that's one of them. Uh, let's see, uh, stable employer, uh, which is uh, the University of Massachusetts, it adds a lot and it subtracts a lot. It's, uh, it's one of the strengths and one of the problems. Um, prime agricultural land, two people said that. Uh, low tax rate um, because of Route 9, the room and the meals tax uh, has increased revenue. Um, the Connecticut River, recreational resources, natural environment um, uh, for both recreation and possible agricultural use, protection from Hatfield. That was one of the things that I said. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, you know, they broke off and now we don't like them. Um, the state park systems, which were a part of that, and then finally uh, the people. We have a lot of people in town with a lot of experience and expertise who volunteer uh, their time and energies that keeps the town running. So those were strengths. Um, what were missing or weaknesses? Do you want me to do that too? Um, Okay. <clears throat> okay, the needs were uh, uh, 
changing needs and aging town infrastructure, uh, town budget limitations, uh, no community center or downtown gathering place for community events, uh, loss of a sense of community, um, more support for historic resources, um, including the Porter Phelps House and the Farm Museum, uh, uh oh, town facilities can't accommodate large numbers. Uh, as the town grows, uh, there's more strain placed on these facilities. Um, the loudest voices in town seem to get what they want regardless of objective needs. That was one of the problems. Um, let's see, and then finally, the divide between the newcomers in town and the longtime residents serves to keep people out and keep them from having a feeling of belonging. Um, <clears throat> let's see, uh, public transportation um, through town, not necessarily just along Route 9. Um, the traffic problem on Route 9, which was seen as a regional problem, so there's not so much we can do about it. Um, being a small town between two larger towns. Um, and finally, Hadley transitioning from a small town to a medium-sized town, um, which is gonna cause some challenges. Uh, the sense of security, the town government can come up with a master plan for town resources, and that the sewer plant is almost at capacity. Those were the needs. So much for group number two. Did I get it? Any co other comments from group members? you have anything on your maps you want to kind of highlight, point out where things are located or where you're suggesting um, things go? Yeah, let's see. For the zoning, we talked about having some spin-off industries and expanding the industrial park. That was one of our ideas. Um, also, uh, space for facilities so farmers can do value-added products. Um, food preservation or that kind of thing. Uh, we thought that would be good. Um, uh, pedestrian crossing tunnel or bridge on Route 9 so people can get from Hopkins to the library or vice versa without taking your life in your hands. Um, and uh, I wanted a, uh, a network of trails for hiking, biking, and snowmobiling that would connect the recreation areas uh, within town. So I guess, and on this map, um, I don't know. We we just highlighted Route Nine. <laughs> that was the big problem. One of the things north south on bike paths. Yeah. Well, we we had two bikers in our group. We wanted a lot of bike amenities, and nobody else seemed to want them. <laughs> so uh, yeah. We have east west two lanes north south. Okay, anything else anybody want me to? No? Okay. Anybody from his group want anything to add? Okay, thank you very much. I've been told that farmers can't process food because of federal law. Is that correct, Joe? Joe Tchaikovsky was telling me that he can't make strawberry jam out of the strawberries. Because there's a law. Greenfield. Huh? It's gotta go to a place that's yeah. licensed. Oh, the Franklin County? Somebody mentioned that they have licensing. Yeah. Okay, who would like to go next? Group one. <clears throat> and some of our resources we identified were the soil conditions in Hadley, natural beauty of the area, the, the mountains, the ranges, uh, water resources, Lake Warner, Connecticut River, other side rivers, streets, streams, the schools, the fire station, uh, Skinner Park, recreation amenities nearby, close to 91 in Amherst, and we're centrally located between, you know, two big, if you would, UMass and Northampton. Some of the needs um, or key resources and keep going the way we're doing is family farm characteristics, try to continue on with that idea, uh, more solar development, uh, more renewable resources, more s geothermal, uh, non-renewable, um, you know, less reliance on non-renewable energy resources. Some of the needs, 
that we think we were needed were a bigger library, more open space, land conservation, uh, better public transportation, traffic mitigation, especially on Route 9, and more traffic uh, or more public transportation north and south from Route 9. Um, some kind of a senior center, a much, I don't want to call it a senior center, as much as a community, excuse me, a community center where not just seniors, but all of the people can meet together in a uh, larger available area. Park and Rec needs some better space for what they have now, um, more sidewalks so that more bikers and transportation and walkers can get around off of uh, the route, like, you know, there's a sidewalk system basically from Spruce Hill Road to almost uh, the cross path road on one side of the street, but other, other than that, there isn't a lot of sidewalks available for um, walking off of, or bike pathing or otherwise. You know, the other group said a north-south bike path, and you know that probably would be something that would be a great idea too. Um, one of the things that one of the business people in our group mentioned was that the uh, starting a business in Hadley, and not just because of the Hadley zoning rules, but it's very costly and very time consuming and expensive given all of the rules that are required and laws and studies and everything else that needs to be done both on a state level and a local level. And it's pretty difficult, according to them, for a smaller business to really get going and get started. It takes a fair amount of capital before you do anything, even can push shovel to the ground to get going in something like that. Um, farm stand. There's a couple of farm stands, year-round farm stands, and uh, you know, supporting local agriculture. Uh, those are all things that you know are good and should be continued. Uh, let's see what else have we got. More open space. We mentioned that uh, sense of community that maintain the sense of community that is in town. There's a real I don't want to call it a closeness, but or the sense of community where people get together and will, uh, you know, help each other out. And but it could be improved because sometimes some of the certain areas of town, there's a great sense of community. In other areas, sometimes they don't even know who their neighbors are, and those are some things they would like to see improved on. And the idea was that if we had a some kind of a central community center, that might help. Uh, some of the things that we've identified as far as pluses and minuses, Route 9 is obviously a great plus. It's also a great minus because of the traffic. Um, that's not a surprise to anybody. This one was simply drew, you know, senior housing where different areas where possibly senior housing could be or more of a central center community where there is uh, more bike paths and, and walking with amenities that would support that, such as like little, you know, little restaurants, little shops, um, community building that we already had already mentioned. Silvio Conti uh, pres preservation areas were also mentioned as a good plus. And does the group have anything to add to that? Pardon? Oh, Mount, Mount Warren. There's you know, several. Uh, recreate, not going to call them recreation areas as much as conservation areas and available available areas for people um, to do walking, biking, trails. There's Skinner, Mount Warner area, um, and those are all great things that you know also preserve open space or preserve space. Right. The, the, as the community grows, we're essentially we're, we are aging, obviously, and you know more affordable senior housing, not just plain old expensive senior housing, but something um, that would be more affordable to possibly some of the people that have been here and may not be able to afford potentially some of the more expensive senior housing that might be coming up. mentioned um, traffic areas of concern outside of Route 9, like basically oh, the shortcuts yeah. everybody yeah. takes. Right, on, on this, let's see these over here. 
I can't take it off. There's too many wires. Put your whole thing over here. There you go. Yeah. But on this map, there's a lot of traffic areas of concern. You've got obviously Route 9, but then you've got all the shortcuts that they take to get from Northampton to Amherst. Coming down North Maple Street, Roosevelt Street, cutting across Huntington Road, Rocky Hill Road, through uh, either coming down Middle Street or you want to come down Middle Street, and then they cut down through Cemetery Road and across Cross Path. You've also got the Bay Road shortcut to get to the backside of Amherst and, and uh, South Hadley. Um, from the malls, you've got the area all the way to Barkett, you know, South Maple Street from the malls going towards Amherst. And coming off of University Drive, the one that comes over the Route 9 and cuts over onto uh, Roosevelt Street there. Those are all high traffic areas that, you know, some of them could probably be, you know, not much we can do about some. Could you make them local traffic only at certain times of the day? We don't know. You know, on Cross Path Road, possibly making that one way might solve something. It would certainly take care of a lot of traffic coming this way. You would, you would direct it on Route 9 sooner. Is that a good thing? I don't know. Um, but is there some way we can help try to mitigate some of this traffic on the side roads and keep it on the main road? I don't know if it's a good thing or we don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing, but, you know, those are concerns that there is. So very good. Thank you. Could I? All right, we are group five, and uh, I'm going to start to repeat a lot of things you guys have heard in the first two groups. Um, we have quite a long list of things. Still there. Um, community needs and key resources. I think one of the first things that we put on the list was the people um, were a key resource, both the new people and, uh, and as well the old time residents. Um, the second thing that came up and then was repeated through a lot of our conversation was actually the Connecticut River. Um, there was, you know, seen as a, as a great resource, though access to it through Hadley is, is almost blocked everywhere, I guess. It's mostly private property, but it would be great for some mechanism or some places for people to actually be able to take advantage of, of the river that you know, comes right through our town. Um, Again, a number of things that we've already covered with other groups. Um, good mix of commercial versus rural. The trails and uh, walking trails and, 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 uh, and uh, open spaces that people can use. You know, we cited that there's a lack, other than the elementary school's lack of like public parks. Okay, and you know, there's some talk about you know the farms and the fields can make up for that to a certain extent. But uh, personally, we live up up here in North Amherst, where there's been a lot of development and a lot of houses, and, you know, our nearest park is really up in Sunderland, right? So, I mean, if, you know, if you have a small child um, that it needs to be watched, it's, you know, it's not very convenient. It would be nice if during some of the development that's been going on up in, in North Amherst, if there's some of this space that, you know, people could take their kids to. Um, oh, so many things. Uh, lack of sewer and uh, gas service through a lot of the town. Um, uh, alternative energy would be interesting to look into. Um, but again, I think the big things and the things that we marked on our map, of course, like everybody else, is, it's been the Route 9 traffic problem. Um, if there is a way to open this up and move things along through there, it could potentially take care of a lot of the other issues we've been talking about. We also cited a bunch of little hot spots that you, we just talked about as well, you know, the, the, these accident-prone zones where people are taking shortcuts and driving too fast, and, the, and especially in the commuting, com, commuting hours. Um, and those also, we talked about the traffic between the two malls, between the, you know, the Hampshire Mall and the, and the Walmart Mall. Um, that's getting to be kind of a, a, a bad spot too, and that's where the bike trail goes across right there. I think somebody talked about that before. Recently, in North, North Hadley, you know, they paved all of Shattuck Road, and people are going through there. And I, I don't know what it's like in other neighborhoods, but we don't have a single traffic sign in our whole neighborhood. And just to, traffic calming, I think is what they call it, right? Just to calm down uh, the traffic issues uh, throughout the town would probably be a good thing. Um, again, I think a lot of people had cited in our green areas, you know, the Mount Warner area, the Lake Warner area, um, 
the Silvio Conti Expanse, the bike path are all really great things that we have, great assets. Um, um, UMass was cited as positive, but also it brings a lot of trouble, right? Uh, it, it, as far as just the mass of traffic coming through, plus kind of student encroachment into, into kind of into neighborhood areas where maybe some of the student population might be better served on UMass rather than creeping into rentals into, into, into neighborhoods. And then just the stress that, that, that UMass places on emergency services, right? So, uh, you know, especially during the weekend, if you have an event and you need emergency services, they might not be there because the, the resources are being taken up elsewhere. So it's a, it's a plus minus thing. It's, you know, it, a lot of us are here because of UMass, but also a lot of the problems with UMass need to be dealt with. Um, the, and there was concerns, speaking of UMass, there were concerns about vulner, vulnerability of creep up and down the North Maple Street, uh, uh, Roosevelt Road area. Um, the concerns that that rural character could be altered if, uh, if we're not careful. Um, I think interestingly, as far as the plan is concerned, is if we could think about lifting the height restriction on the commercial development, especially on the kind of high density commercial part of Route 9, uh, but maintains more of a village character to this part of, of, of Route 9, that might actually be a good way to balance commercial development, increase commercial development without changing the character of the area too much. Um, again, a lot of things that we said, or other people have already said, am I missing any of the key points? from our discussions. Um, cemeteries? Yes, yes, cemetery, we're running out of cemetery space, apparently, <laughs> yes. Um, and we did actually, and one, the last thing I'll mention, we did talk a lot about senior housing space. Um, and maybe, you know, in our future outlook, maybe again, somewhere in kind of the, the village area, um, maybe if, I, apparently, there's a frontage restriction on new buildings, and so maybe for senior housing, you don't, you don't really need to worry about that as much. So maybe there's ways to create affordable senior living space um, and keep it kind of and help build the kind of the village character to the, to the main part of town here. Um, I, think, I think that's about it. Thank you. Okay, so ours is not really filled in all that well. However, um, for the first one, we talked about the community needs more than the key resources. So a uh, place to congregate, a uh, need for a new library, modern space, a uh, new senior center, open space uh, with farm. We, we liked the fact that there was open space and farms and cows. Um, we also felt that there was a need for more park areas. Uh, we felt that there was a lack of communication on who or where to go to for town matters. Um, the need, there was a strong need for outreach person. And, uh, let's see, uh, we felt that there should be more volunteers in the town government. Better IT, um, we felt that we should be using the resources from UMass to help with, you know, the fact that uh, they could help us with the IT. Um, better posting of minutes from the meetings. Better, um, <coughs> uh, we felt the community playing a bigger role in the town direction for civic involvement. So that was the, the first one. And then the second one, opportunities, opportunities and constraints. Uh, change, clarify zoning in Honeypot, which is um, to maximize preservation. Uh, community center on Railroad Street, uh, a walkable town center. Uh, campus setting, campus, sen campus se setting. Uh, develop more walking slash shopping areas uh, and the town center, uh, along, especially uh, Railroad Street. 
uh, better utilization of common, uh, better constraints of root nine. Um, we we talked about consi considering better taxation from big boxes, um, better communication from towns about what's happening uh, for regarding community discussion and uh, pros and cons of Route 9 taxes, possibly a three-tier tax system, uh, green space along Connecticut River, and then community vision. We, um, we felt a uh, green open space, supporting small businesses, supporting a campus setting, uh, a trolley system, a uh, need for tourist maps, uh, trail maps, a uh, farmer's market on the common, having more crosswalks, you know, due to safety mm -hmm. on Route 9. And then uh, detailed development scenarios. Uh, more density in downtown area, uh, changing zoning for housing, 55 and older. Uh, infill downtown <laughs> areas uh, so that more people could live there. Uh, change zoning for tiny housing. And uh, see, whose table was that? Maps <laughs> should be updated also. We felt that, you know. Is there anything that I missed? Very good. Thank you. <coughs> what was that article about updating maps? Um, the maps seem like they're outdated. You know, they they were supposedly they were changed uh, five years ago, but there doesn't seem to be any change from the last map. Which which maps? All maps. All of these. Oh. Um, I think we talked about our the zoning map. Yeah. Okay. So I'll update the zoning map. Yes. Okay. Hello. I'm representing group number four. My name is Sarah. Um, so start with the the community needs. Let's see. Um, like the other groups mentioned, we have a need for senior housing and affordable apartments. Um, we also have a need to uh, remediate Route 9 traffic, perhaps with public transportation improvements. And we also discussed um, some concerns with maybe the Department of Transportation maybe changing the width of the road, which is a conversation. We really don't know what's happening with that. And we just would like to be updated. Um, there's a need to um, restrict the commercial development so that it doesn't sprawl, and we could do that by um, using existing structures in town. Um, let's see. And um, while we really enjoy the farms and the nature that's accessible, we um, probably would uh, like to have more tennis courts, fields, and parks, which was mentioned previously. Um, and to have that highlighted perhaps with a tourist map, that was a good idea. Um, and let's see, there's also um, a comment about the development in North Hadley and uh, perhaps some excessive clearing of the land for larger homes. Um, but, um, the resources that were very valuable to us were the bike trail and the public transportation. Um, we saw the college and university as um, a cultural amenity, and it's good for the economy, but of course it's that double-edged sword that also runs through town. Um, let's see. And what else we have for uh, the library is a great resource. Um, with great staff, um, the proximity to resources, the walkability from the bike trail to certain businesses. Um, and that's pretty much all we had for that. Um, of course, we, we also mentioned the crosswalks and the speeding, the speed limit signs. Let's see. And on the maps, um, 
we highlighted pretty much the same things that the other groups have um, with root nine, and we marked up some areas where there's definitely need for crosswalk, which I noticed just working along Route 9. I noticed that people get off the bus and have nowhere to cross and stand there for upwards of five minutes, sometimes like 10 minutes, just so they can get across, across the street safely. Um, and maybe that has to do with where the bus stops are actually located as well. Um, let's see, moving on. Yeah, we, we talked about where there could be potential for senior housing, just like the other groups mentioned. Um, and we, uh, we also found that the map, this map here, um, it looks very similar apparently to the, the map from 1960 something and that it, you know, while the, the look of Hadley has changed a lot, the actual um, constraints have remained and that's pretty much, that's successful in our eyes um, and we'd like to see that remain. So, moving on from there, um, am I missing anything from my group members? No? We just highlighted some of the recreational resources oh, yeah. as features. Yep. And, um, yeah, we, we have a lot. We have, like, the Hadley Reservoir and then um, Mount Warner. Um, but I think that there would be a great, there should be, um, a resource for people that come into town that want to know where to go because it's just there's so many beautiful spots that um, there's there's no guide on that so um, yeah so I think the big concern is the aging population but I would really like to bring up the fact that um, as people age you know like who's going to take over and who's gonna where's the young energy gonna come from because we want to revitalize like small farms and uh, it's kind of hard to, to do that when we restrict so much um, the housing structure. So young people cannot afford houses in town. So I suggest looking at alternative ways to deal with that. Um, tiny house being one, that's what I am doing, but that's kind of another conversation. That's a longer conversation. Um, and uh, we would like to see the rural character of the town be preserved. Um, and. I think I think that's pretty much it. Anything else? Am I forgetting? Anybody from the group have something they want to add? I think you covered everything. Nice job. Thank you. So we're running beyond nine o'clock. Does everyone want to stay for like another five or ten minutes? Is that okay? Okay. The next thing what we'll close out with is basically kind of try to come up with what would be the, maybe the top ten ideas that were sort of the common themes that kept coming up, uh, and then just kind of do a quick poll in terms of trying to prioritize which were the maybe like the top three or four of those. So uh, I'm going to start with Dylan. Dylan, do you hear any particular ones that seem to be repeated as pretty consistent? Do Pardon? Do you want just one from here or do you want a number of them? Well, you were taking a list. Uh, well, how do we, we can either take it from you All right, or we can part of it. So I hear... Um, <coughs> uh, Let's see, number one, I heard Route 9 is both a, an advantage to the town and a disadvantage, particularly on the disadvantage side, you've got traffic problems. Um, I heard some concern about appearance of the development um, and a lot of concern about it continuing to sprawl and continuing to expand. Is that pretty solid? Is it one of the top 10 concerns? And safety as well. Um, so, I actually heard safety as maybe a separate concern because I was hearing pedestrian, a need for more pedestrian and bicycle safety throughout the town, um, especially on Route 9 and especially on Route 9 near PVTA stops. I heard that from most of the groups I went to, um, but I was also hearing a lot about the ability of people to bike and walk to, um, to Route 9, to this area here, um, and within people's own neighborhoods. Does that sound right to you all? Yeah. Okay. The rural characteristic. <laughs> rural character? Yeah. Rural character for sure. As a as a resource and something to preserve. Um, and and 
by rural character, what I heard repeatedly was preservation of, of natural areas like Mount Warner um, and also large expanses of farmland. I didn't hear anything about rural character like um, traditional looking farmhouses or um, tree lined streets. I mostly heard wide open green spaces. Uh, library. The library came up both as a resource and as something that needed fixing or improving or expanding or something. Um, Is that a top ten? Okay. Should have brought my notes. Yeah, so senior housing. Affordable senior, senior housing. Affordable senior, senior housing. Senior young, people. And young people. So how many groups said uh, um, affordable housing for young people? It was, um, okay, so a couple of groups. Um, I heard in a number of groups a, a desire for a stronger sort of village center. Um, and I went to like three groups in a row and they all marked the same location, which is basically where we are right now um, with a, a kind of campus of town um, municipal buildings and then um, a number of groups also mentioned the possibility for smaller commercial space, smaller business space <coughs> along Railroad Ave um, with pedestrian connections, safe pedestrian connections across Route 9 and amongst those areas. Um, who else? That's, that was my top list of what I was hearing. Okay. Throw some up. Uh, public transportation. Public transportation? Uh, yeah. uh, route 9? Uh, or everywhere? <laughs> Yeah, we, yeah. yeah, we talked about that. Not just your community. Well, we have senior center up there. We have senior housing. Community center. Community, community center. center. Community slash center. Senior center. Yeah, community yeah. slash senior center. Senior uh, slash community center. One, one more. Recreation opportunities, like parks and things like that. Okay. Okay. So people can go to do them. Okay, I heard two more that, that I thought of. Um, I heard repeatedly the, the need for increased knowledge of what exists in Hadley. Um, so people, a couple people talked about that as a tourist map. Um, but what I think they were mentioning was they want to know where the hiking trails are. They want to know where the farm stands are. They want to know how to, to accomplish things in town, who to go to talk to, um, what the processes are. Um, so as a sort of better sharing of information about what this community is and what's, what's possible here. Okay, so I hear two different things there. I hear one is like a development guide to guide people who want to come in and do business. It's like a step-by-step -step hand holding. Mm -hmm. And then, no, no. no. It's yeah. tours. Yeah. Okay, so what you're looking for is a map that highlights uh, points of interest. Attractions. So is it for is it for visitors or is it for residents? Yes. Both. 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 Okay. But it's not, it's not, it's not the economic. It's not economic development. Okay. Um, it was. I think it was your. You reported out that you wanted increased knowledge of how to do things in town. Right. Was that your group? Right. Yeah. Uh, we felt that there was kind of like a disconnect in terms of what was going on in town. You know, it seemed like the boards knew right. what was happening, but it wasn't really uh, sent out. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't full knowledge that of the public. It's, it's something what different from information available about the you know, town and the attraction. So that's a little different topic. So yeah, is that topic. more of a, uh, what's the way to word it, uh, better Communication or flow of information between the uh, the government and the the citizens or the residents, yeah. and then so and then on the other again on the government um, on the topic of governance and, and governing yourselves, um, I heard a lot of praise and support for existing town boards and the knowledge that they have um, and that there are volunteers who have put in a lot of effort into the town um, and also a need to continue to develop leadership um, and to 
promote volunteerism. Promote volunteerism. And then my, the final thing I heard was this sort of nebulous question of how do you maintain community in Hadley and what is community in Hadley? Um, and, you know, it sounds like old and new relatively well, get along relatively well in, in Hadley, um, but there's a sense that maybe there's, there's a need to improve community and to make sure that the the community values in Hadley are shared equally amongst all. The opportunity to access the neighborliness um, is, is available to everybody. Okay, I brought out a paper. Good place to stop. Okay, so let me run down this list. And what I'm gonna be doing is asking for a show of hands. Oh. I think you might want to combine some of those. Yeah. Okay, let's hear it. The community senior center, the village community center. Community senior center. The village center. Those are two different things. Yeah. Well, we looked because at them community, as one. Because your community senior center might not end up being, it, might be, it probably should. We, we looked at that as being the focus of yeah. the village built around it. Because it's where people okay. are going to I think that's two different things, but what do you think? Anybody want to com combine those or keep them separate? Separate. 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 Okay. Anything else? I'm open to it, because I, I agree. I think there's, there's overlapping between them. Can you just read them real quick? I'm going to read them okay. slowly. Okay. okay. So what I'd like to do is then, I'm going to be going down them one by one after I read them. Megan, just think about it. And I want you to vote for your top four. Okay, I'm going to go one by one. I want you to raise your hands for your top four honor system. You're going to hold yourself to each of them, just four votes. Okay, so we have Route 9, both in terms of how Route 9 is developing and the traffic and the like, as well as safety. We have just general pedestrian and bicycle safety uh, throughout the community. We have the rural character, and more specifically, the farming and open space, as opposed to the more we want to say New England, old New England town type uh, character, uh, library, affordable senior housing, affordable housing for young people, a stronger village center, uh, public transportation, community senior center, park and rec, park and recreational opportunities, a map of the town highlights, and I'll come up with a better word for it at some point. A map of the town highlights for both residents and tourists, highlighting the assets of, of the community. Uh, better communication between the government and the residents. A develop a uh, new town government, le uh, developing new town government leadership and volunteers, trying to bring more younger people in into the fold and get them involved in government. And then to improve and maintain uh, the sense of community that the town has, uh, a small town sense of community. Yes. Can I suggest combining the affordable housing for seniors and young people? No, two, two different things. No, I, th I think that they're, they're the same. They're affordable housing. They're affordable no, housing, they but they're different, different, they're different programs, yeah. and there are different um, solutions to each of those. Yeah. They're both affordable. It's an affordable issue. But we're looking, but you're asking. Okay, this let's put this up. Who would like to combine that? Who would like to keep it separate? Let's Raise your hand to combine. Let's we'll do it like that. <laughs> Raise your hand to combine them. Uh, Raise your hand to keep them separate. Separate? Okay. No, That's only two out of your four. <laughs> Are people aware that Hadley has the highest percentage of affordable housing in, in the whole valley? Are yep. people aware of that? Do you want, are these people, the people want to go over that amount? That's all I'm hearing. Yes. Well, I, and, and I didn't get the sense that, that it was talking about affordable housing in the sense of 40D subsidized. subsidized. Right. I think it That's was a good point. more affordable housing. What's right. yes. yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah, That's a good point. Yeah. More affordable market rate housing. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Or, or, uh, Okay, not, subsidized, subsidized, not subsidized type housing. Right. Pricing options, pricing okay. variations. But Joe, you are correct. I and mean, people who aren't aware of that, maybe you just touch on that, where that, that okay. Hadley that's, does have. That's a good point raised. Yeah. I mean, that's 
Yeah. What we assume. There's two different things. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's very true. Yep. Under the so state, state law of affordable versus. Yeah. So we're talking. So we're talking affordable. We're talking at market rate. Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. Not not the subsidized idea. Right. Okay. People kind of got it narrowed down to their top choices. No. Okay. <laughs> we can't be here all night. Okay. Let's start with Route Nine. Uh, Route 9 issues and safety. <coughs> Raise your hand. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11. 21. Okay. Pedestrian and bicycle safety. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if you don't get a, a high number, it doesn't mean it's not important and it's not going to show up as being one of the top choices. It's just at some point we have to kind of put a little sense of hierarchy in here. Um, uh, retaining the rural character. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, The library. Two. Okay, affordable senior housing. Market rate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, affordable market rate housing for young people. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. A stronger village center. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Public transportation. That's two. A community senior center. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can only vote on four. That's correct. Or you can cheat. Or we can cheat. Or you yeah. can cheat. That's correct. Right. I'm not. We're, we're not monitoring that. That's true. Nixon administration or evil. <laughs> uh, park and recreational opportunities. One, two, three, four. A uh, map of the town highlights for tourists and residents. Town assets. No one wants to waste their vote on that. It's still, a, it's still a really good idea. Okay, but just because it doesn't rate high, that's, that's not a problem. Don't worry about that. Does anybody have any votes left, or you all spent them? Yeah, I already used my votes up. That's true. Does anybody have any votes left? Yes. You got one. Okay. It's left. <laughs> okay. If I give you all one more vote, <laughs> that will give you two. Okay. Well, it comes down to Jim. You're the only one that has a vote left. Oh, we have two. We have three. Okay, we'll keep going then. Uh, better communication between government and residents. Okay. Two. Uh, develop new uh, town government leadership and volunteers. Two, three. And then the last one is improvement, uh, or to, I'm sorry, to improve or uh, maintain the sense of uh, community. Pardon? Okay, I'll give you three. Okay, so the top would appear to be Route 9, Rural Character, Affordable Housing, senior. I'm sorry, Affordable Senior Housing, then Affordable Housing for Young People, and a Stronger Village Center. Those would be the top. Everybody on the same page? That sounds like it makes sense. Again, these are all important. These are all going to get looked at. These are all going to be listed. Uh, but these seem to be the, the ones of the, the greatest concern.
Um, well, that's terrific. Then I think we're going to probably stop this right here. I think we've gotten everything we need. Anything anybody want to add? I told you this should take two or three days before you start talking on this. It just. I understand that. It would have been nice to do it. If we had our way, we would have done this over the course of a weekend. But it was determined we didn't have that kind of time. Anyway. I think we should all give Larry a hand first. Yes. No, no. no. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I think you all should give yourselves a hand. Yeah, I give agree. Me praise, give me the raise. That's right. This, this is very good. I did see a few hands raised. You don't need a Any last comments before you head out? No. Well, thank you very much. And uh, Dylan is correct. You were great. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that uh, uh, makes these plans happen. Thank you, Larry. So thank you very much. Thank you.